Hi guys, if you watch all my videos, which I appreciate is unlikely, you may have seen I bought some hall sensors. I uh, can't remember whether it was eBay or AliExpress or wherever, but it's a pack of hall sensors. I think it cost me about 50 pence or 99 pence. Uh, looks like there's about 20 in there, I would think. Uh, I just thought I'd see if I could do anything with them. So I've rigged up a very simple circuit here. I've got a LiPo battery, so that's 3.7 volt supply. That's going into the hall sensor on the, well, as we look at it, the left pin I've got to the positive, the center pin I've got to the negative, and then the right pin, as we're looking at it, I've got a resistor, it's a 1K resistor, as it happens, going to the negative side of this LED, and then the positive side of the LED goes to the positive of the supply. And then if I bring a magnet near it, LED comes on. Let's push that forwards. LED on. LED on. If I turn it around the other way, so it's the opposite pole, it doesn't turn it on. It does when we get over the top, but it doesn't when we're in front of it. Or on the other side of it. So it can tell which pole is pointing at it. On. Not on. So when we get over the top, it does come on. But So, very simple switch. That magnet happens to come out of a hard drive that I took apart. That's the uh, wiper, brushes, whatever, from the hard drive. Happens to have a nice coil on the other end of it, which is used to move it. This is another one. I took a couple apart. On this one I've actually soldered directly onto the ends of the wires that come off the coil. And I was wondering whether we could very simply switch it on and off by pulling out that resistor. I'll leave the LED in circuit for now. Uh, got a couple of magnets there, which you might guess where we're going with this, if I show you that spinner there. Oh gosh, I can't get them apart. Let's just pop them on there for now. Oh, that didn't work. I might have to just glue them in place. I was just hoping they'd hold themselves in place while we do the demonstration. Maybe, maybe not. Right, so that's is that already repelling it, or is that just going north south due to. Yeah, that's going north south due to. North is this way. No, it isn't. South is this way. <laughs> north is that way. So I think that's aligning itself. Or it's just tilting that way, I suppose. Could be. Yeah, it might just be tilting. Just coincidence that happens to point north. Anyway, what we want to do is see if we can actually deflect it in any way. So, So that's what we want to happen for a pulse motor, isn't it? 
we want to kick it out of the way. Right. Get it in the right position for it to work. Yeah. So, if I glue some magnets onto this one, I don't know if I've got three of that particular size. I have to have a little look around to see what I've got. And then we'll see if we can make a little pulse motor up that is just triggered by that hall sensor on its own. I've done it before with a transistor in circuit, so the hall sensor turns on the transistor, then the transistor turns on the coil. I just wondered if we could do it even simpler with just the hall sensor on its own. It's a matter of how much current we can have flowing through there, obviously. Right, I don't have any more of that size magnet at the moment. There probably are some around somewhere in the house. But I do have plenty of these little ones. Let's clip that one back there out of the way. These come from these, I uh, can't remember what they call them, toys, but they're all little plastic tubes with magnets in them. And you make things with them. So I've been using them as a source of little neodymium magnets. I tried all sorts of difficult ways of cutting them open and then I found that if I just crush them a bit they come out. I was using knives, saws, cutters, all sorts of things. And then as I say, I found if I just crushed them around the edges they do come out, honest. Crush it a little bit more. There we go. So I've got plenty of these. And I reckon I can put five in there. Like that. Bit of hot glue, that'll hold it in place. I don't think we can squeeze an extra one in there. No, I don't think we can. So I'll put five in each one of these all facing the same direction. That should do the job. Well there we go. It is working. It's not particularly fast and I am actually using uh, a 2S LiPo, 7.5 seven volts. I wasn't sure whether the hall sensor could take it but it seems to be alright. If I put the diode, diode, LED in circuit, then it slows down because I've got a resistor on that, so we're obviously reducing the current flow or the voltage. Um, but like this, it's working. So we've got a spinner, fidget spinner, with a load of magnets on it. It's just sitting on a piece of foam that happens to be the right height for it to line up with the coil from the hard drive. So that's the electromagnet that's repelling these magnets. So every time magnet passes the hall sensor that turns on that coil which repels the magnets that are in line with it at that point. I stop it. Right, okay, we're stopped. So as so I move it around, it turns on the hall sensor, or the hall sensor allows current flow. The current flows through the coil, and that repels the magnet that's next to it. So if I just move it around gently, you see it kicked it the opposite way then. needs to be in just the right position so that once it's passed it kicks at the right, right point. 
I'll put the LED back in circuit just so we can see it flashing, but this actually can't cope with the reduced current. Just not quite enough to keep it going. But you can see where it's actually flashing. So as this magnet comes up to there, the current flows and the coil turns on and re repels that magnet. If this was on a needle and magnet support bearings, then it'd probably be all right. This one just isn't quite a good enough bearing surface to keep it going the way we want it. It is slowing down. If I take the LED out the circuit, then we're okay. So there you go. A pulse motor made from a hard drive, uh, I don't know what they call that bit, the arm, coil, and a hall sensor, and a battery. There's actually no other clever electronics in circuit there. You could do the same thing with a reed switch. One of them. I was just thinking about that LED and I put it back in circuit but I put it in reverse so it's now flashing as the um, coil collapses, well not the coil, the current collapses in the coil, so that's the back spike that's lighting that LED now, the back spike off the coil, and we're also running it off a 1S LiPo instead of a 2S now, so that's 3.7 volts it's running off, and it's still running quite happily, not quite as fast as it was on the seven and a half volts but it's still running and we're getting the flash on the back spike it looks quite complicated with all those wires hanging off it but that's just so I've extended the tails off of the hall sensor so they're just straight soldered to where it was on that little breadboard before. Right, tidied up those wires. So now maybe we can see exactly what's going on. Hall sensor. Extended the wires or the legs on that with these 
three wires. So those go down into the breadboard. Power coming in from the battery goes to the left two wires, or the left and the centre wire on the hall sensor. The right hand wire from the hall sensor then goes to one side of the coil. The other side of the coil comes back and goes to the left hand side of the hall sensor. So the coil is across the outer two legs of the hall sensor. And then the LED is straight across the coil. Hey, thanks for watching. There's plenty of videos on my main channel with more added daily, so don't forget to subscribe and enable the notifications to keep you up to date with my new releases. You can help keep my channel running by donating a dollar on Patreon to buy me coffee. You can always find more information in the video description. Thanks again for watching.